we, we were doing a whole series on community. Yeah. You know, community, 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 <clears throat> because and how they reach and how they connect and yeah, and how a community can be two people, well, or just one person providing a constant. Because you know, we're talking. You know, Mark mentioned baby boomers, Gen Xers, but I still remember very fondly, like as a kid driving around with my mom and dad listening to Lauren and Wally. Hmm. It was like having two uncles in the car. Hmm. Yep, I listened to them too. Hmm. I mean, I grew up in Natick, um, and I listened to WKOX. That was a local radio station that my parents always had on. And, um, you know, I had no choice about it until <laughs> until the rock and roll started, and I learned how to sneak around and change the station and then take the knob off so they couldn't adjust it. But um, it was uh, the... Um, the it, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful project to work on i've been so fortunate to I mean, when, when i was a little kid i always wanted to to be in radio mm. I, I was just hooked on it and what inspired you as a little kid you remember well, when i was a little kid when i was in second grade i still remember this i w i went to the um, west natick uh, elementary school in natick you'd wa walk from my house it was about a three quarters of a mile and um, when I was in second grade, they brought in the chairman of the t schools, of, of the school committee, who happened to be a musician. And he, he played big band music, and he had a band. And he brought in his band, and then he brought in um, a little, some, some, a wireless microphone, and he said, and, and some radios that he put in the back of the, of the classroom. He said, I'm going to show you how a radio station works now. And so he, he had, he took the wireless microphone, which w and he tuned it onto a vacant AM station, AM frequency, and then they put on this show, pretending to be on the radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, uh, he did a great job. And I got, I said, God, I got to do that. That is so much fun. And I finally talked my parents into buying me a wireless microphone. And I was by that time I was in the third grade. My sister was in first grade, and we had this thing called a. Uh, a radio flyer wagon. It was a red radio flagon, yep. radio I flyer wagon. Yep. And I would talk my sister into dragging me around the neighborhood, and I would, I would have this wireless microphone, and we had, we had a big sign that said, listen for the local news on, I've forgotten, actually it was on 1620, because that was a vacant frequency. And I would be dragged around the neighborhood by my sister, and I would peer into people's windows, and I would report on what was going on <laughs> in their houses. Well, very quickly, I became, I became a, a very popular with the people who sold shades. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, uh, whenever they'd see me coming in that, in that red wagon, the shades would go down. And <laughs> finally, I, uh, and it was a lot of fun. And then when I was a kid in high school, I uh, built some, ra built a radio transmitter, built a whole radio station at my house, and we had no FCC license. We just, uh, we were pirate radio people, the kids, and we had a big antenna. We lived on a farm, and we put an antenna, a long, long wire up, up from a pine tree back to the to the house, and hooked it into the transmitter. And we broadcast from Monday through Friday, from six o'clock in the evening until ten o'clock at night. We broadcast local radio, and um, we would start by just playing an entire album from a musical show, from a from a movie or from a from a Broadway show. And that attracted the parents because they didn't really have the opportunity to hear that kind of stuff on radio. And we had found a bunch of old albums at the dump. So it, we, the parents would actually turn on the radio, and then at 7 o'clock it was rock and roll time. It's time for Elvis Presley, Ricky Nelson, you know. The, the, we, and we had lots and lots of fun with it. We drew a big audience. And then... I made this terrible mistake. Tell us what happened What next. What happened to W... It was W-R-A-C. Yes. Uh, for which stood for Raccoon Hall, which was our <laughs> clubhouse. And um, so we, we got really... We had a lot of listeners, and we would have some of the cheerleaders would come by in cars and actually get out of the out of their cars and come in and want to go and and do cheers uh, for, for those of you uh, just listening on the radio you would not believe the smile on ed's face yeah. right now it is <laughs> it is quite a smile go yeah. ahead anyway so we got our egos uh, expanded 
And we believed that we could do almost anything with this radio station because so many people liked it, and we were playing great music. And you were how old about this time? Uh, I was 16. I love it. Okay. I, I, I just got my driver's license. Great. Okay. And, uh, and I'd, won, I'd actually won the science fair in Natick High School with this radio transmitter that I built. And as soon as I won the science fair, we, we put it to work broadcasting. Right. Um, but the, um, we got a little too uppity. And one of the things we thought would be fun would be to do some kind of uh, uh, false commercials about the high school. Mm -hmm. And so oh we created one of the things that we did was we did a, a commercial um, about uh, our uh, very, very uh, competent but very mean um, algebra teacher, the math math teacher. Her name was Anna Finn, and um, she was she. You had to do what Anna Finn told you to do in her classroom, or you were going to go into detention. And so. Um, we decided we'd do a, an ad about Anna Finn. And Anna Finn, the good thing about Anna Finn was that she knew lots of stuff about math. The bad thing about her was that she weighed about 350 pounds. Mm -hmm. And um, so we wrote this ad, which I still remember, where it said, and I put this ad on the air, it said, in, and this was in 1957, hi, uh, we're the uh, Bethlehem Steel Company, and we'd like to do something to make you comfortable in your in your own home. Well, the Korean War has been over for three years, so we're not making tanks, we're not ta making planes, we're not making jeeps, but we are making lots of good things that are very, very good for you. For instance, uh, what you we can make you the finest, finest bed that you ever had, uh, something that cannot be destroyed, that will handle anything, and we can prove it. How? Well, we made Miss Finn's bed. <laughs> oh, no. Well, Miss Finn heard about that, and she <laughs> went to the... She went to the, t she went to the um, principal and said, you have to do something about this. And the principal called up the FCC in Boston and said, oh boy. you have to get these guys off the air. So we're sitting... Over a bed. Yeah. Holy seat. All over a bed. My parents, my fa parents were both teachers. And so we're sitting there doing our show, and, and <laughs> all of a sudden, my father yells up, Get down here! <laughs> and we, I go down there, and we're playing, leaving the Elvis Presley record on. I go down there, and there are these two guys with badges on them. Uh, and they're, they're talking to my father. And my father, he's, he's oh, very no. upset, you could see. And they say, your son, your son is running an illegal radio station, and, and you have to stop this. You're the, you're the adult here. Uh, you have to control him. And so they, they didn't take the equipment away, but they made my father promise that he would never let us do that again. Oh, and no. we didn't dare we didn't dare do it after that. Um, and and that and then they sent my father a letter, a certified letter, which is still hanging in a frame downstairs yep. in at the yep. station, threatening him with huge fines and two years in jail if he ever let his son Edward do uh, what I was doing with the radio station so again. And um, that was the first piece of imp per first piece of correspondence we ever got from the government. The second piece of correspondence, which is also up in that frame, came from uh, a state senator um, after WATD was awarded uh, the overall excellence in radio broadcasting and broadcast of radio news for the entire country. Wow! Uh, by the Edward uh, by the the Edward R. Murrow Award, which we have up there as well, uh, where the senator wrote us a note saying, I'm so proud of what you've done. And, and we put that with the one that they'd sent, the government had sent to my father oh, that <laughs> earlier. Is great. It's an incredible read if anybody has a chance to check it out here in the lobby of the station. They're literally, and Ed, you've forgotten, you're such a humble guy. That's also next to your induction to the Mass Broadcasters Hall of Fame. All right. Yeah, well. <laughs> But this year. we've had a lot of fun with this. And Last year. I think it, it isn't me. I'm, I'm not, I, I can't do everything, but I've got the best staff in the entire world. And, yeah, we fight, we disagree, we yell at each other every once in a while. But then we'll go to lunch and we'll have a drink and we'll relax. And we'll then we'll start looking at what can we do for the public? Right. What can we do to make our communities better? And we're getting pretty damn good at it. Yeah, you are. I'd say... Thank you.